My name is Nephi Wolf, and I'm with NCSI. This is the fifth of 12 videos on extraction. In this video, we're going to be covering uh, advanced data modeling, where we'll show you how you can use, or how you can take SQL statements from like a SQL query, and you can create new new columns or new, new data points that you can use in your reports. Um, so the first thing that I want to start off with is the, the, the basic layout of, of how extraction is running these queries. So extraction, uh, it's when, when you run, uh, when, when it looks at one of these, these attributes that you're going to report on, uh, this is basically what the, the SQL is that it runs. It says select like the field name that you put in there or, or SQL, and that's what we're going to be looking at today, from the table, like the SQL table, and then it'll give an, an alias that it'll refer to and then uh, where the unique ID is equal to that row. So this is the SQL that it's going to run when it's getting your attribute. So then as we switch over to extraction, and we look at the, the data modeling tool here. So for, for this example today, we're going to be looking at the service manager data. We're going to be looking at the service requests. And then there's several tables here. We're just going to focus on the request table. Um, so as we look at the request table, we can see there's this c column here called request description. And so as we look at this column here, uh, you can see that it's the, the expression. This is where it actually finds the data in the database. This is the alias for the table. And then it's just referring to the symptom column name. So the SQL table has a column called symptom. So if we were to go back to the SQL, it would say select request, the alias name, request.symptom from the service request table where it's equal to record one, two, three. So it would run that. And that, those ones are pretty simple. Um, you know, this one, the cost currency, it's just saying select the, the cost currency for that particular record. Um, so those ones are pretty straightforward. They're, they're easy. Um, but we're going to be focusing on SQL today. So um, let's pull up the query here, or this report. So this VIP column, uh, if we were to look in the database and look at this, um, this VIP column is actually zeros and ones. So Elena here, she submitted a service request, and uh, so she is a VIP. Um, but if we report on it here with zeros and ones, it just doesn't look as pretty. And so instead of just selecting the is VIP column and just putting that in there and showing a zero or a one, we can actually, let's see if we go up to the top here. So we can actually say select, and then we can use a SQL case statement. So we say when the, and there's the alias, when the request dot is VIP, so when that column is equal to a one, then we return the word yes. And otherwise, if it's not equal to one, if it's a zero, or if it's empty, or if it's null, or anything else, then we return a no. So here, instead of just grabbing the data straight from the database, we run it through a SQL case statement. And, uh, and let's see, do we, oh, I didn't I don't have the SQL there. But uh, so then it will, uh, it will, it will let me go to the end here. It'll put that case statement in this section here, and it'll it'll say select case like when it's a zero, return a no, and when it's a one, return a yes from the service request table, and then for that one row. So that one's pretty simple. Um, that's how you could put a case statement in there. And then there's there's a lot of other um, things in here as well, as well. A lot of other. SQL, and there's a lot of examples that are in there. So one thing I want to point out is you can uh, come up here to the edit menu and you can find. And so you could look for like case statements and you can go through the database and you can see all of these different tables where they're using case statements or maybe like a, like a where clause or something. So where do they, like where are they using where clauses? What are some other examples? Or um, max, are they, are there columns where it's selecting like a max something? So, so maybe that one. So I just want to point that out, but you can, you can search for a lot of examples. And, uh, so it makes it easier to find stuff. Um, and so another example that we'll cover today, 
Um, we'll look at like a date diff. Um, so this one here. So this one looks like a big mess. I mean, this example, as you look at it, and I, I just pasted it into SQL here, and that's this one here. So again, we're doing the select, let's see, move it down a little bit. So select, and then this stuff here from that stuff there. So it's just a big case statement, and, and then the case statement goes through in order. So it says, check to see the the amount of the, the date diffs, the amount of time, and it's going to count days. So how much time in between the creation date and then the coalesce command? That just means uh, if you get a blank value, then go on to the next thing and go on to the next thing until you don't get a blank value. So check how much time between the created date time and the resolve date time. And if you don't have one, then the close date time. And if you don't have one, then right now. So count how many days between one of those. And if that number of days is less than 30, then return like one, return this thing here. We'll run this real quick just so we can see the results. So there's a, the results down there. So if it's not less than 30, then it'll move on to this next one. Let's say count how many days between that. And if it's less than 60, then return this one here. And if, it, and if it's not less than 60, and just goes on down the line. So, so this big long statement here, you know, date diff command in there, and uh, you know, counting the number of days. So, so that's a great example of, of date diff and, and counting the days, and, and you know how you can look at that. Um, and another one, let's see, another example, the total time spent. Um, so this one here, uh, this one. It's looking at the, it's doing that case statement, and it's saying if the t total time spent, which the total time spent is seconds. So if the total time spent is null, then we return a zero. And if it's not null, if it has a value, then we take that value and we just divide it by 60, 60 seconds in a minute, and then uh, that returns a value, and, uh, and we show that value here. So in the database, this would be, I don't know, 55,000, 5,500 seconds or something like that. But it divides it by 60 and it gives you minutes. So that can give you a, an easier to use number. And so you could also, like if you wanted to do hours, then you could just take those, you know, 200 seconds divided by 60, that gives us minutes. And then we could divide by 60 again, and that would give us hours, 60, 60 minutes in an hour. So you could do something like that where you can do math and you can has a round command there. Um, so that's just another example of SQL that you can use. And then this last one, um, this one's a little bit more complicated. So I created, um, so when we look at these, uh, you know, with this report, how many service requests has Alan submitted? Uh, he submitted 26 here. And how many has Elena submitted? She submitted one. Um, Aaron Green has submitted three. And so, so that's something where we can we can do a uh, a group by command. And so again, it's just taking that it's taking that SQL there. And so it's it's just this stuff in here. And so it says like select the count. So it's going to count the the customer unique ID. So how many uh, unique IDs do we have from the in, in the service rec table? So it's going to count. It's going to go through and it's going to count all of them, but we don't want to count everyone. We don't want to count the unique IDs for um, Elena and Alan and A Banana and Arav. We, we don't want to count everything. We only want to count the ones, the unique IDs where, so we have this alias here, where the the user ID, the the customer ID, is equal to, and then here, this requesting. So remember how remember how the table is is aliased. So we only want to to sh to count the the customer unique IDs that are where the customer unique ID is equal to that row. So as we go back here, this row, the, 
the customer unique ID is Elena. So for this row, let's say her unique ID is five. So it's going to only count them where like the request, the, the unique ID here, her unique ID is five. It's only going to count them in the in the request table where the customer unique ID is equal to five. So it wouldn't count Alan Taylor's and Arabs and the banana guy. Wouldn't count everybody's. It would just count the ones for Elena. So that way, so you're using this, you're, you're filtering it down using the the table there. Remember how we use that there? So we're filtering that down so that we only count Elena's. She only has one. And on this row, it's a whole other query. It runs a different query. And it counts for Alan Taylor. And in his case, he has 26. And then on this row, Arav, he only has one. And Banana only has one. So it runs this for each row. And it filters it down. And it counts out how many, you know, how many there are for each row. So that's that just gives you an example of how you could run a subquery. And uh, and that subquery can then how you can filter it down and, and uh, look at the, the particular row you're on. So um, yeah, so, so those are some, some basic examples of SQL, how you can inject SQL or use SQL to create more complicated uh, attributes. And once you've created those attributes, then they're just available here on the, the front end, and users can just drag and drop them. And they don't need to understand how everything is set up in the back. Um, but we'll, we'll move on to some other videos to show you how you can start creating these reports. This is the last video for um, how, you, how we'll be configuring the back end. And uh, so if you have any questions, um, just let us know. And you can post in the, in the comments there for this video. And uh, we'd love to help you out.